Hello, this is Angelica Yingst, and you're listening to Centered, Grounded Conversations About the Metaphysical. Blessed April, friends. It's Angelica Yingst. I'm coming in with your Earth Medicine and Tarot reading for April. I am looking forward to the energy of April. Um, We need some good spring energy and uh, we are right and properly in the middle of Aries, which kicked off at um, the twenty on the twentieth of March, and is the beginning of spring. It hasn't felt that way where I am in Pennsylvania, as we've had snow squalls and storms and freezing temperatures. But um, as we move into April, I am confident we're going to begin getting some nice spring weather. And we have an interesting month because we have three lunations, depending on where you are in the world. Um, We have two new moons and a full moon. So uh, when we have a second new moon, it is called a black moon. Whereas when you have a second full moon, it's called a blue moon. That's why that comment of once in a blue moon uh, happens, because it doesn't happen very often. And black moons offer us two new moons. So we're starting April with a new moon in Aries. And new moons always offer us a chance to go internal, to work on the self, to work on dream work and meditation. And we tend to not want to be super, um, extroverted during new moons. Um, so we're, our, our senses are heightened. We may have crazy dreams. I know I've had a couple, we have awareness that is highly attuned to the earth. Um, so we're kind of starting this new moon in Aries and it's an interesting new moon. It's conjunct with Chiron. So often when we have a new moon, um, and we're conjunct with Chiron, that means we're going to be dealing with old wounds. Okay. Cause Chiron is an asteroid, but we consider it the, um, area of, uh, the wounded healer. So Chiron in Greek mythology was, um, the healer that trained all the other healers. And, um, he was a, um, centaur and he was wounded by the poison in his, in an arrow. Um, and I think it came from Aries, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, and anyway, he could never fully heal himself. So he always limped. And this idea of being a wounded healer is one that I know I carry as an archetype and many healers do as we're continually working on ourselves and working on our wounds, working on our triggers as we move into, you know, healing for others. So when we begin this new moon in Aries, we're beginning with that great energy of Aries, which is, um, dynamic and courageous. And, um, you know, it's, it's the baby of the Zodiac and I don't mean it isn't wise. I just mean it's the first one. So it has excitement and dynamism. Is that a word? It's very dynamic. Um, so, the other thing that happened earlier this week was that there was uh, Venus made a conjunction with Saturn. So we're kind of dealing with this push and pull between how do we want our, you know, relationships to look, our, our uh, connections with others to look, what are the rules we're setting down for how to interact with each other. So as we kind of move into this new moon, then we have Aries who kind of has this, Uh, creative fiery energy. And so we can really look at and plan for how to plant seeds to get what we want in the future, you know, because Aries is wonderful at that leader leadership. I mean, it's a, um, it's a cardinal sign, much like, um, I'm trying to think of the other cardinal signs. A Capricorn is a cardinal, um, uh, Cancer is a a cardinal and, um, on the other side, um, Libra as a, a cardinal, they kick off the season. So they, they tend to be the leaders. They tend to have creative ideas. They tend to figure things out. They're good at, 
um, spatial, you know what I mean? And when I say spatial, I don't mean like just figuring out uh, your room. <laughs> I mean, spatial in terms of how do all these things fit together in my life? How do they fit in? Um, how does my relationship fit into my sense of integrity? And so you, you know, these signs tend to have a lot of integrity and try to figure things out um, because they all work together. So, um, and because the Venus, uh, Saturn issue, we're going to be like focusing on the relationship in this new moon time. Um, and then of course it also brings up, you know, because it's conjunct with Chiron, it brings up our old wounds. So we're going to be processing, um, we're going to be in, um, thought Mercury is also in Aries right now. So just noticing, like we're going to be attuned to these circumstances and looking at our relationship, looking at how they, you know, we don't want to mirror old wounding. Um, so we're just making a conscious decision to, uh, move into a space of observation in this new moon and not acting out. That's the downside of Aries is they tend to be rash. Aries kind of pushes us to act, 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 act. So we're going to have to be bringing ourselves in. And since Mercury is in Aries, we know that our words can come out really quickly as well. So just watching both of those things. Okay. Now on the second tomorrow, um, if you're getting this on the first, uh, Mercury has a Kazemi in Aries. So I mentioned this last month, um, and this isn't something I was hundred percent familiar with when I talked about it last month, but I did a little research and when, um, a planet goes Kazemi, it is close to the sun. So basically like is like a big magnifying glass because the sun enhances the energy of that planet. So Mercury in Aries, if it's, if Mercury is going Kazemi in Aries, it basically means that you get this extra oomph of being courageous and, um, creative, uh, in, our speech because Mercury rules communication. Okay. So, you know, we can look at it as almost like the, this sun energy is going to align our words with our hearts, which is great. So we're always speaking from the heart and we should be focusing on speaking from the heart. Okay. Um, there is a hard, uh, placement on the fifth, which is Mars conjunct Saturn and it conjunction conjuncts in Aquarius, which is, um, a heady sign, you know? So, um, this is a really just watching ourselves because Mars and Saturn together often have the reputation of causing obstacles and issues. And, um, Mars tends to cut ties and, uh, Saturn holds really strong boundaries, almost like too many boundaries at times. Um, and so we're thinking about that in terms of like how that works with us in terms of our thinking and our logic and our rationale. So we tend to like, you know, even like our work, you know, so we just need to make sure that we're not cutting ourselves off from, um, thinking, you know, from our logic, like, and I would say this, it would be more like we would think that we're being completely rational. There's this great quote from um, an AA speaker that I love it. That uh, he says, um, "It's not what we know that's that what we don't know that's going to kill us. It's what we know with a absolute certainty that just isn't true that's going to kill us." And that can be a valuable lesson to carry forth. Is this idea of like, what do you know that just isn't true? What do you think you know? Well, we don't know what we don't know but we can examine our thoughts and our beliefs, especially as they're grading up against things that aren't working where the flow doesn't go. You know, that's where we can start to examine, like, is this belief I hold really true? Is this idea that I keep carrying around with me true? That can be very, very helpful for us. So, um, there's a lot of different things coming up. Um, Venus on the sixth, um, moves into Pisces, which is awesome because they love each other. 
<laughs> and so that really moves us into love and love is a wonderful thing and I think it's um something we can carry through this month so um our full moon this month is on the 16th and it's in Libra so Libra is about balance right and about dynamics so we're really looking at the power dynamics of our relationships and this full moon in Libra is going to square Pluto and Pluto can be difficult uh, at times because it is um, we call it the Plutonian influence you know can be a little difficult but at this time the full moon is going to basically bring up all those unprocessed wounds that we have okay the emotional stuff so if you're noticing in your relationship you're struggling with um something that you're like i thought this was done it wasn't done and we get the opportunity and we get to be grateful for the opportunity to work on that again so we're really trying to look at vulnerability here at this full moon in libra on the 16th of april because what we want to do is like notice the ways in which we try to avoid our vulnerability we're going to be working with vulnerability a lot this month because of our animal guides and things like that and there's no surprise that this animal guide came up so we're just kind of looking at our own relationship with vulnerability our own relationship with our unprocessed or unconscious wounds or emotional issues that need to come up okay so the sun moves into taurus on april 20th so we love being in taurus uh, if you're uh, an earth sign because it's super stable it moves slowly it's like intentional with its moves so if you're finding things aren't moving as fast as you want it to hello aries um <laughs> you just know that it's moving at the right pace right now so Taurus on the 20th is going to be the one who's sort of grounding us and we love to be grounded and then on the 30th of April we have our new moon in Taurus and that's just going to be like a really nice new moon new moon Taurus energy is now Taurus is a fixed sign meaning it's it's kind of has a reputation for being so, um stubborn it's right in the middle of the sign of the sign of you know whatever the season so we tend to think of it as being like a little stuck in um and so we have taurus leo um scorpio and um aquarius are all fixed signs and they have a kind of stubbornness to them what's wonderful about having a new moon in taurus is that you can kind of dig in and get comfy you know that getting fixed in our spot can also give it give us a moment of a breath it can almost be like um we like a meditation we can surround ourselves in beauty do a lot of that self-care stuff that um feels luxurious um, any way you can luxuriate in yourself and um, I'm like I think it's important to sort of think of this new moon in Taurus as an invitation to indulge and be a little decadent anything that's going to help you relax and be in peace and have an experience that's spiritual um, is going to be important okay so that's kind of the astrology that's going on um now let's talk about the medicine of the month i pulled um a tarot card i pulled crystals i pulled herb and i pulled um an animal so let's talk about our tarot card of the month the tarot card of the month is the six of wands now the six of wands um in a lot of tarot communities we call this the victory card it's um a man with a laurel uh, around his head he's carrying a wand with another victory laurel he's riding a white horse and there's people following him five people following him now a lot of people think that five people following him are the five um, people that were fighting on the five of wands 
and those people are young people and they're sparring so it looks like they're at war but what they're really doing is practicing fighting right and what they're doing is working on becoming the hero that's coming home right so now they're honoring the one of them that got out there made their name and is now coming back victorious this is a wonderful card um to get because the wands are um a little fiery and creative and and bringing in that aries it's going to feel a little like a victory okay now the warning here of course is not to get arrogant because there is a imbalance of energy here there's a guy on a horse and everybody else is walking so we always watch him um like is he uh like holding his victory over everybody else well we hope not we think he deserves success and it usually comes up that way now with six wands we have a lot of fire okay and so often the secondary meaning of this is a lot of passion okay and young men you know and that's what is showing on here are very passionate about what they're doing and who they are so we're taking that energy of the young man coming home luxuriating in his own success as like a another invitation an invitation to celebrate our own successes and to honor what we've been through we get to walk in with our heads held high now also the, another underlying meaning of this card is when i talk about passion is of course sexuality and this is a very sexy card okay it doesn't look sexy there aren't two people like making out or anything but it does have that underlying sexual energy so if you are pulling this card for example and you get it with the tower which the tower sometimes is referred to as like the orgasm card <laughs> you are gonna have some sexy sexy times and so you know this is the time when all the animals are having their babies and so we're gonna have a little more fire under the belt so to speak during this month um and it's you know also we have all this venus in pisces energy on the sixth that's going to be a lot of fun um <laughs> so enjoy love okay you know just love love and enjoy the connection with your sexuality now one thing this card is is active like all of our fire cards fire signs are active fire is active like it changes every second it's a different fire and that's part of the energy so movement is really important and you can use sex and sexual connection as your workout routine you know as part of it you know we're we're moving our bodies and it's a wonderful wonderful chakra balancer to have sex that you enjoy <laughs> so i'm giving you permission also to embrace your sexuality there's a wonderful post that mary beth monfiglio wrote a, a few years ago called how to fall in love with yourself and she has a list of things to do to fall in love with yourself and it's worth the google because it is amazing and i love it because we often think like oh i can't have sex if i'm not doing it with another person or i can't enjoy my body if it's you know not enjoyed by another person and well no ma'am that is not what this month is about this month is about connecting also with your own success and enjoying your body for the sake of enjoying your body so i'm not saying you have to go out and find a partner just to have sex i'm saying that you can also like fall in love with yourself and do it for yourself without hiding it without all the other baggage that we tend to have bring with us from our childhood so as you ride your white steed into april with your six of wands i'm going to be giving you some earth medicine to carry with you now it's interesting because i often pick cards for all the medicine like i'll pull a deck and so i pulled a deck and the first card that i pulled was sage and 
if you're not in the know with um, sage and particularly white sage, it's being native communities are asking us. Now I am, I'm native, but I don't have a tribal affiliation. So I don't consider myself part of this group. It was not my tradition to be taught from my mother and my mother's mother and my mother's mother's mother, um, how to quote unquote smudge with white sage. That was something that was taught to me in the white uh, New Age movement. And what Native people are saying is this is cultural appropriation. Now, smoke cleansing appears in nearly every single culture, but the particular way in which white sage has been used um, has been, been exploitative and appropriative. So we're asked not to use sage uh, in sticks, not to over consume it and buy it and it is you know going extinct from the amount of over harvest so when when native peoples ask to not use sage i say okay we're not going to use sage but i wanted to take this opportunity to say if you have a relationship with another sage plant black sage blue sage something that you connect with that you grow um, sage is one of the allies that appeared this month. I am not going to use sage this month. So I pulled another card for myself to connect with another herb. And I want to pass that on to you if you're not um, working with sage either. Okay. And, and of course, I'm not going to tell you like, oh, you're, a, you know, a bad whatever if you use sage. I think it's a personal decision. Um I just think that, you know, we should listen to Native people. And, you know, we don't want to be taking um, ceremony and ritual that um, were used by Native people and claiming them as our own. Um, I don't think plants are owned by communities or cultures, but the, the ritual is. So let's just be mindful of that. And then you make your own decision about it. So the one that I pulled is red clover, which is abundant right now. And it's going to be more abundant as April moves on. Red clover is a forage crop that's often used to feed horses, cows, sheep, goats, deer, eat it. Um, it's a, a ground cover, right? So it is a grounding and centering herb. It's absolutely beautiful. You can use it in teas. It's great for courage and it works and resonates in the heart chakra. So it also helps cleanse and clean, clear the blood. So it's wonderful for that. It has that um, real connection to the earth. And I think that's a really wonderful gift for April is to start connecting back with the earth if you feel disconnected from the cold of winter with being in the soil and in, in, the, in the land. So really great to connect with red clover. Now our crystals this month are real fun too. We have another courage card. So we have the courage in the six of um, wands because he's coming back victorious. Aries is just a courageous sign we have the courage from red clover and garnet comes in for courage and bravery garnet is a very grounding stone i pull it a lot it just comes up because i work with it a lot it is protective it resonates both in the root and in the heart so it helps to give you that sense of homey feeling it's a really great stone to be working with our second stone is ocean jasper and that works with renewal and rebirth. It is, a can, it is a stone that is connected to Mother Earth. So it is a wonderful stone for spring. It also comes in and works with the heart chakra as well. Now, Ocean Jasper is a stone that helps you make big changes. It goes right down to the DNA to help you sort of repattern and repath um, old ways of being into new ways of being that are helpful. 
So we work with ocean jasper a lot in the spring, and I definitely work with it for Mother Earth. It's basically always on my altar, which is great. Citrine is coming up as our uh, gift for April, too, an ally. Citrine is a stone that is joyous and happy. It resonates in the solar plexus and the lower chakras. It is a stone of manifestation and abundance. And I am particularly drawn right now to the Congo citrine, but there's great citrine from Malawi that's almost orangish. Um, what you want to avoid is heat-treated amethyst that is sold as citrine, and that will have like a specific amber color. We're going for natural citrine. Even smoky citrine is going to be great. And this helps bring in and call in the energy of the east, of the dawn, of, you know, new energy. And that's where we are. We're right in the middle of spring. We're moving through this renewal time and rebirth time. So really great combo of stones, garnet, ocean jasper, and citrine. And so um, let's talk about our animal this month. I was so actually excited to see that deer came forth. And we talked about vulnerability. Deer embodies vulnerability. Like any prey animal, quote unquote prey animal, um, they're highly attuned to their environment. They are like pick up on subtle energies. They're very intuitive. So deer is a guide that's intuitive, but it kind of steps into vulnerability because any animal that's hunted is a vulnerable animal. You see it with a rabbit. You see it with, um, you know, squirrel. Um, they're not predators. So they have to be quiet they have to be attuned. They are um, very, very prevalent in North America and around the world. Um, I think the only place deer is not found is Australia, which is interesting. Um, but deer, um, they are very connected with that idea of antlers you know, because the males have antlers. The antlers are often said to represent like antenna to spirit. And so they're used to connect, if you're working with a buck, with spirit. Um, I know my uh, guide that I work with, the way I see her is a, as a woman with antlers. She's connected to spirit. Um, so deer are also used um, as food, as clothing, for leather, for food, for, um, you know, bone, you use bone and antler for making knives and other items. It is incredibly powerful. When we work with deer, we tend to work with that upper world energy. So we're probably going to be, if you're part of my membership and you do the shamanic journey, probably going to be going up into the upper world um and in different you know societies deer is seen in different ways but always as gentle and vulnerable so they're very graceful of course too um and that they also have you know are seen in in big herds with their babies and so that's another one is healing that inner child in this vulnerable guide. So we'll be working with deer this month. And, you know, if you're like me, you know, there's been a couple times this already, um, before April, but where deer, I are just about to cross the street and I have to stop and allow them to cross in Pennsylvania. We get a lot of car accidents with deer. So we have to be highly aware, just like deer of our surroundings. So this is the earth medicine for April. Thank you for joining me every month. And I look forward to um, coming to you again soon. Bye. Thanks for listening to Centered with me, Angie Yinkst. If you'd like to send me a question or comment about this show or any shows, you can send them to Angie at themoonandstone.com. 